Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and one of my NA games. On the NA server I've been steadily going up the Soviet cruiser line and although it's been a little while since I've posted any games, uh, I decided to pull this one out because I don't think I've showed the Chapayev on the channel before, certainly not one of my own games in it. I've actually managed to play all through the straws without really having any particularly noteworthy games. But I do have a couple of Budioni games saved up because uh, the Budioni is quite a nice ship. The Straws on the other hand is somewhat awkward just because of that horrible turning radius. And the Chapayev has some of that as well but it is at least slightly better. And of course it's the first of the, uh, the Soviet cruisers to get radar. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now is using the radar and uh, spotting the enemy gearing. This is a, a tier 10 match. But I've also managed to pull out sideways, and that's a bunch of battleships, so on reflection this was not a smart move. This was me doing something rather stupid and getting away with it. I don't really recommend doing that, pulling out sideways and coming to a dead halt in front of battleships at less than 10 kilometers. It's not really wise in any ship, but especially not in a cruiser. So I lost a little bit of health and we flushed out that gearing, we know he's here, um, but I didn't, I imagine, really get much spotting from that with the, the radar, but we at least know he's there, because the enemy team has only got three destroyers and um, we know the other gearing is on the other side and potentially the other destroyer they have is as well. So we don't have a lot of ships here, uh, we've got a fair few on the other side, we're a bit scattered uh, at the moment. There's still a couple that are around the middle here, including me, kind of, but my focus is on this flank, and I'm actually backing up enough in the hopes that I can start firing over that uh, outcrop of rock. And as it turns out, I can. Now, in a US six inch cruiser, uh, I probably would have been able to fire even closer to the rock than that. In fact, if I was in the Atlanta, I'd probably be able to sit right next to it, but uh, I, I had to get a little further away. And this is what I should have done to start with, is, is position myself so that I can fire on the enemy uh, the enemy uh, ships trying to push through. And it doesn't look like they've got that much on this side, so it's no immediate reason to run away or anything like that. But if I had to, I'm also in a position where I can do that. So this De Grossa, this Fat Freddy, is... Uh, taking a lot of fire and he'll be a good one to take down. I like to imagine that I'm the one that came up with that nickname, but maybe... I don't know, I mean, I know I've I've said it a bunch of times in my videos and actually Jingles used it in a recent video, so maybe it's sticking, but it's entirely possible it's one of those nicknames that it's just really obvious and a bunch of people came up with it at the same time, so... I like to imagine that I did, but that's not necessarily true. So a little bit of damage so far, but nothing spectacular. This isn't going to be a high damage game. And it's not actually going to be a, a, a particularly high um, scoring game, I don't think, either. Although I don't actually have the score screens for this one. Uh, but I picked it out because it's an interesting match. Not every interesting match has a massive damage result. And I've had okay damage games in this. Um, I think my best is probably between 90 and 100k. Although I can do better in a Kutuzov, I can easily go over 100k damage in a Kutuzov because the Kutuzov has the ability to create its own cover and the Chapayev has to be a, a bit more um, cautious in some ways because um, you, you can't just smoke up and uh, pummel somebody over and over from uh, a, an out of radar distance. It can however give some support here because these enemy ships, they're not I mean, they are trying to push. They're not pushing through the cap. We have successfully stopped them capping, but they are pressing hard on the two destroyers in the Bismarck that are here. So I, I can't just run away. I do need to, to help out here. Nat de Gross is still alive. So the Bismarck's taken a heavy battering. Uh, the destroyers are, I mean, they've got, uh, what is it, two battleships and uh, a cruiser and a, a, a gearing. So, um, if the destroyers can drop in their path, that'll be fine, except their gearing's going to be giving them warning of uh, incoming torpedoes. So it's not hugely ideal, but the fact that we have a gearing here, that it's not just the Yugumo, means that the enemy gearing can't be maybe quite as confident as he would like. 
because uh, the Yugumo, <laughs> you don't want to meet a gearing in a Yugumo or a Fletcher or really a, any American gunboat. It's usually not going to go well. Although I had, a, I've got an, a, another replay saved. I had a game relatively recently in Ashima where I was forced into a gunfight with a gearing, and I won, but only because he had less health going into it than I did. So there we go, the DeGrossa finally goes down and uh, the, the, uh, the, the Hippet's looking fairly unhealthy as well. That Turpit's though, still lots of hit points. And of course their gearing is still also around. So I think that's friendly gearing smoke. But the enemy gearing might have popped his smoke as well. In fact, yeah, that looks like two smoke clouds. So this is just a matter of focusing these guys down. And we can really only worry about this flank. Which is, it's not going too badly so far. Um, the other side, I'm, I don't doubt there was a lot of action going on on the other side as well. The A point was very fiercely fought. But uh, as it is, we've stopped them capping D, but we haven't actually capped it ourselves. So we can't let that situation go on for too long, because if we lose the other flank, you know, if we lose a lot of ships all at once, that's going to be rather bad. The Bismarck's trying to pull back, desperately trying to heal, and I'm trying to get close enough to where I think my radar will actually uh, work. So there's that gearing, well within radar range, and well this is the perfect time because the other gearing and the Yugumo are both here, I'm well within range of this guy, so this is absolutely the right time to use radar. This is basically as optimal as it gets, where not only can you fire at them, but you've got allies that can fire at them as well, and then you can just take them down quickly. So there we go, it's our gearing that gets the kill. I'm taking a little more damage myself in the process, but that's not too bad. And, uh, oh, well, the Turpus has moved a bit, but uh, that means him and the Hipper aren't really supporting each other that well. So, although we lost our own Bismarck, and uh, we are going to lose the Yamato over in A, um, it's still, we're actually slightly ahead. And um, that has put us slightly ahead on points as well. We do, however, need to not be complacent about those cap circles, because cap circles win games. So the Hipper's trying to run away. He's managed to do a fair bit of damage to our own gearing, who... Unfortunately, uh, I, I don't know if he didn't have a smoke available, um, but yeah, rather than try and stealth up again... and Oh, that's just me bashing my desk, because why not? Uh, rather than stealth up again, uh, he kept firing at the Hipper, and... Um, uh, unfortunately died, so it's now just me and this Yugumo. So, as I said, the Yamato died. I think we traded for something else on the other flank, though. Uh, so we are still ahead on points, but only just. We only still have that one cap circle. Um, so, the Hippers, the only thing that's left now, um, I think, killed the Turpits. I don't know, something killed the Turpits. I wasn't paying attention to that. And... Um, my thought is really just to, to protect this Yugumo, because the Hipper, of course, is going to have that good German Hydro. So uh, if I can, uh, if the Yugumo can torp him, that's great, but if not, I can uh, maybe do something about it as well. Of course, be careful he doesn't take me out, though, because that would be a bit bad. He's got those uh, German 8-inch guns with the very nice AP shells to worry about, so I can't be complacent here. He does, however, seem to be concentrating more of his fire on the Yugumo, now he's spotted the Yugumo. But uh, between the pair of us, there we go. That was a reasonably easy kill. So, uh, there's three enemy ships left. And although the uh, the other side's not looking too bad, um, we're going to lose, there we go, we lost the Bismarck, and we're also going to lose the, the Prince Eugen, so it's just going to leave that Shima over there. And we did cap A as well, which uh, is going to be pretty useful in terms of point gain. What's left is an enemy Shima and a Neptune. And as long as we just stay alive, we've got this in the bag, but the fact that that Shima is alone versus the other Shima uh, backed up by a Neptune, um, I was counselling that guy just to run away and stay alive and play cautious. I'm not sure why I chose to come down this side, by the way. Perhaps I had the thought that the Neptune might have turned back across but um, he, he wouldn't have had time to do that. So it would have been quicker for me to just go down the middle passage towards sea or maybe even just head over uh, the north side of the island towards the Shima to back him up. But I don't know. I guess I had the thought that I didn't want to leave that Yugumo alone in case he ran into the Neptune because um, he's not looking in the best of health. 
but the Shima actually has worse concealment than the, the Yugumo thinking about it, so I, I'm not sure I made entirely the right decision there, but at this stage of the game, it doesn't really matter. It, it's not anything like on a par with the, the derp at the start where I, where I pulled out sideways and uh, uh, <laughs> absolutely was in danger of just getting citadeled. So that's the, the Neptune capping. Uh, the Shima isn't. Because, I mean, we're resetting this Neptune, so um, the Shima must not be in the cap. And there he is. Uh, he's actually in pursuit of our Shima, even though he's got lower health. So that's a little bit uh, a little bit bold of him, but um, it's not going to matter, as it turns out. Now, our Shima's been... Uh, you can't really see it from here, but he's been dropping torpedoes in their path, and it's a bit kind of, like chance luck really uh, if he actually catches either of them because they're going to know you, you have to expect when you're chasing a destroyer like that that you will be encountering torpedoes but as it is that Shima does run smack bang into one of our Shima's torpedoes and so he's not only stayed alive but he's managed to get himself an extra kill in the bargain and that just leaves this Neptune basically and it's probably not going to to uh, there's, there's probably not going to be enough time for us to kill him because we're almost a thousand points but uh, I do manage to get that final salvo in so that's all right so as I said no um, actual uh, scores for that um, it probably wasn't that bad for the damage it was only about what 56k damage in the end but um, considering it was tier 10 and radaring destroyers I probably did alright score wise uh, because damage isn't the be all end all the, the actual targets that you're damaging also matters as well but I didn't really pick that out because it was you know for the damage or for the score whatever that was I think it was just more that it was an interesting Chapayev game that I'd had over on the NA server and uh, I've, I've kind of found myself like despite the awkwardness of the soviet cruisers a lot of the time the only one i haven't liked has been the kirov I've, I've found myself actually quite enjoying the rest of them so i'm sort of looking forward to the uh the donskoy and then eventually the moskva although that's going to be a ways off because once you hit tier 8 that's where the grind really slows down in in, in warships um, but um, yeah, overall, it's been quite a nice line, and I I was a bit um, unsure whether I'd enjoy it or not. But I'd heard good things about it, and although I knew um, from uh, looking at the stats that uh, it's not all gravy, they do have some downsides. You can you can work around the downsides. It's one of those lines that has an interesting set of characteristics where there's there's some good points to work with, and there's some bad points to work around, and it it pushes you to think about what you're doing and I like lines of ships like that because uh, some lines are a, a, a bit more you can just derp around and do whatever you want but uh, not really with the Soviet cruisers they require a little more thought so hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, this uh, tier 8 replay and if you have you can hit the like button you can leave any comments below you can sub to my channel if you haven't already and as always stay tuned for more